If you have arthritis, I know exercising can be really hard, especially when you're trying not to flare up your joint pain. This is why I have made an arthritis friendly, low impact, 25 minute follow along workout. If you could grab a light set of dumbbells, anywhere probably between three to five pounds, I actually ended up just using some filled up water bottles that ended up weighing about two pounds. You need some space, you need two dumbbells or whatever object you pick, and here we go. It's time to make your joints feel good. Let's go. But we are going to get going with just some marching. I want you to hang on to those weights and we're just taking it to some marching. And you're just gonna kind of move those weights as feels good to you. Just starting to get some blood flowing. And now I want you to take those steps side to side. So now I just want you to still move those weights just however it feels good to you. And you're just stepping side to side. Now if you've been following me for any length of time, you may have noticed or heard me say that variety is absolutely key. We want to get moving side to side. We want to get moving backwards. So the next movement, we're just going to turn and now you're just going to step backwards and forwards. Again, you're just kind of moving those weights, kind of whatever feels good to you right now. You're taking one step forward and one step back. One thing I want you to focus on though is to alternate which foot you're stepping with. Because sometimes we can get into a pattern of always stepping with our better leg or always stepping with the leg that we feel more confident on. But the idea is that we want to be confident on the other leg too. Start to get that heart rate going a little bit. We have three, two, and one. Okay, now you're gonna take those weights and you're gonna hold them right out in front of you. So your elbows are gonna be at a 90 degree angle. And what I want you to do is you're gonna open up and then come back. You're gonna open up and squeeze those shoulder blades together. Now just open up as far as is comfortable for you. Especially if you have some shoulder pain, it might not feel great to go all the way and that's okay. And now what we're going to do is we're going to add a side step to this. So it's going to look like this. Open and step. Open and step. This is a good postural exercise too. Opening up those shoulders, squeezing those shoulder blades in the back. Take as big of a step as you can. Especially if you have some hip arthritis or some, some problems with knee mobility. You may feel that you just can't step as far sideways, but that's okay. This workout is all about you. Three, two, and one. And now the next movement is we're still gonna stick with the arms for a second. I want you to now take those weights down low, down by your sides, and I want you to stick your hips back so we're not bending in the knees. Sometimes I like to use a wall because you're gonna sit those hips back. All right, now what you're gonna do is you're gonna pull those weights up towards your hips up towards your hips, so we're not going like straight up, you're going kind of back. All right, and now we're gonna challenge coordination a little bit. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna step back, row, step forward, row, step back, row, step forward, row, step back, row, step forward, row. Keep going. Sit back in your hips. So think about using your hips on this one and not necessarily hanging on those back muscles. Pull back. Use those hips. Pull back. Let's do four, three, two, and last one. Okay. Now, you're going to take those weights and you're going to hold them straight out in front of you. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to open up. Squeeze those shoulder blades together in the back, and I want you to add a march to this. Just a small march. We're just gonna do a few of these because you might start to feel those shoulders burn a little bit. If you need to bend the elbows, if the weights are a little bit too heavy or it just doesn't feel right, that's all right. Woo. We have three, two, and one. All right, now we're gonna go to those legs just for a second. And I want you to take those legs out wide, as wide as you can. 
All right, now you're gonna hold those weights just straight down in front of your thighs. I want you to think about sitting your hips back. Whenever we think about any sort of squats, hips, hips, hips. Sit your hips back. So I'll show you from this side. You're gonna sit your hips back. Sit your hips back, then a small bend in the knees. And when you bend those knees, I want you to think about pointing them outwards. So you're kind of screwing them in a little bit. You're pointing them outwards. Okay, now what you're gonna do is you're just gonna do a small pulse here. Notice I'm not really going that far. You also don't have to come all the way up and down. You're staying kind of right in that little squat. Now if this feels good to you, I want you to alternate pulling one arm up at a time. Might feel kind of weird with the rhythm, so see if you can get some rhythm. Maybe one, two, up, one, two, up. Especially if we're not super coordinated, that's okay. Testing coordination and challenging coordination can actually be super important to you. It should start to feel a little burn in those hips. Should not necessarily be flaring up knee pain. If it's not feeling so great, I need you to sit your hips back even more. Sometimes I like to use a wall because I want you to touch that wall. Three, two, and one. Okay, now what you're gonna do is you're going to take two steps to the side, punch and cross. So it's gonna look like this. One, two, punch, cross. Other side, one, two, punch and cross. Whoops, did a backwards there. Punch and cross. One, two, punch and cross. Keep going. One, two, punch and cross. 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 Keep going. One, two, punch and cross. One, two, punch and cross. Three more. One, Two, punch and cross. One, two, punch and cross. Last one, one, two, punch and cross. Now I want you to come here, feet about shoulder width apart. I want you just to have a slight bend in your knees. But even when we're doing that slight bend in your knees, it's not coming this way. Hips, 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 hips. Slight bend in those knees, but when you do that, your hips go back. So think about almost kind of sitting back in your heels that you can lift those toes up and you can still remain balanced. Okay, now what you're gonna do is you're just gonna punch right out front and this is gonna challenge those core muscles. So I want you to think, keeping those core muscles tight, but that's not squeeze as hard as you can. You're just keeping them tight because I want you to be able to talk. I want you to still be able to breathe. I don't want you to be bearing down. Keep going. Core is extremely important, especially if you have lower body arthritis. Three, two, and one. All right, now we're just gonna go back to that marching in the middle. Just move those weights. Now we're gonna go one arm overhead and the other knee, so opposite knee, is gonna come up too. Challenge balance a little bit. So I want you to take a little bit of a wider stance. Okay, I'm gonna take my right arm up and bring my left knee up. And alternate, and alternate. The higher you go, the harder it's gonna be on balance. The lower you go, it's gonna make it a little bit easier. So go at your own pace. And then I wanna see if you can speed it up a little bit. If you're feeling pretty good today and your joints are doing good, and this feels okay. See if you can add a little bit of speed to it. You're coming up and then lifting that leg. If you need to bring those legs in closer, absolutely go for it. But a lot of times when we have arthritis, everyone tells us to slow down. Slow down everything we're supposed to take slow. But you know what? We need some muscle power too. We need some strength and we need some cardio in our lives. So you don't always have to go slow, but you do want to make sure that it feels good first. All right, heart rates are climbing. Let's do 10 more seconds. So you feel the burn in those arms a little bit too. Outsides of your hips. 
four, three, two, and one. All right, now, weights are gonna be at your sides, and I want you to point your palms back behind you. So your palms are pointed back behind you. I'm gonna show you this from the side. What you're gonna do is step and push back. Step and push back. Step and push back. You should feel those muscles right underneath your shoulder blades. And start to get those legs moving, hips moving. Go as slow or as fast as you need to. Remember, it's not all about speed though. There are certain things that we do want to make sure that we are slow, we are controlled. Now I want you to keep this right leg back. Whatever leg is behind right now, I want you to keep it there. Now I want you to pulse back. Start to feel those triceps. Three, two, and one. Now stay here. I want you to take that leg that's behind and I want you to kind of march up. So I'm gonna come up into like a little bit of a bicep curl. March up. Now the higher you go, the more that you're gonna challenge that balance. If you need to, you can just step forward. If coming up on one leg is painful or it's hard, you can just step forward. But I want you to challenge yourself to see if you can at least lift that leg off the ground. Five, four, three, two, and one. Now we're going back to those palms facing backwards. And now the same thing, you're gonna step back, step back, and forward. Alternate those legs, stepping back just as far as you can. Notice I'm not necessarily leaning, all I'm doing is moving my arms back And now we're gonna end up where the other leg is in back. So for me, and if you're following along, it's gonna be my left side. So let's do one more on the right, and now I want you to keep the left leg back. Now you're just gonna pulse backwards. So you're pulsing backwards kind of behind your hips. So you just wanna get back. It doesn't have to be way back. Just get those shoulder blades, kind of roll those shoulders back, keep them down. And now we're gonna go into that march and that curl. So you're gonna bring that left leg in front into a march and back down. Same rules apply if you need to, just step forward for balance. But if you can, I want you to see if you can lift that leg up. Let's do 10, nine, eight, seven, losing some water here, six, five, four, three, you feel that hip and one. All right, back to the middle. I just want you to march it out here. Move those weights. If you have some, some music going, go ahead and dance to that music a little bit. All right, now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna stand on my left side and I'm gonna step out with the right. All I'm doing is stepping out with the right. Now again, you want your weight back. But when you sit your hips back, it's not bending forward. You're still staying upright. So if I were looking at you, I could read what's on your shirt. Now, we're gonna add in a punch to this. So you're just gonna take out to the side. Out to the side. Try to take a big step out to the side if you can. If you find some mobility limitations or restrictions, totally fine, just step however big you can. And now what I want you to do, you're gonna hold the weight, so don't take the weight out. And now I want you to see if you can go a little bit quicker out to the side. A little bit quicker, I just want you to challenge yourself a little bit here. Again, it's not always slow. It doesn't always have to be at a snail's pace. I want you to think about moving a little bit quicker. Okay, meet me back in the middle. And now we're going to the other side. So now I'm gonna stand on my right side, step with the left. 
Hopefully those hearts are moving a little bit. If you do need to take a break at any time, feel free. You can always rejoin me. I will also be putting this video on YouTube in a few days. So you can always come back to us and watch it. Okay, now stand on that right. Sit your hips back just a little bit. And now you're just gonna step. So we're just gonna do a few here. Get your bearings. And now I want you to add in that punch to the side. So you're just stepping and punching. I want you to think about pushing off of that right leg or whatever leg is staying stationary. Push off that leg. Keep going. Now you're going to lose that punch. So now you're just back to that stepping out to the side. And now you're going to try to add a little bit of speed to it. You should start to feel that hip that you're standing on. Start to feel a little fatigue. No pain though. Five, four, three, two, and one. Meet me right back in the middle. Okay, we're coming to the end here. So we're gonna start to cool down, but one thing, we cannot end a workout without some walking backwards. Again, if you've been following me for any length of time, walking backwards is absolutely key and can be actually very pain relieving for arthritis because your joints like moving in different directions. So if you're not familiar with walking backwards, that's okay. What I want you to do, Make sure you have some space. So at least have a couple feet behind you. If not, that's okay. You can just take a couple steps forward and a couple steps backwards. And that is actually what I recommend you do if you're not super confident walking backwards. Just take a couple steps back and a couple steps forward. You can even hold on to the wall as you go, especially if this is your first time. Walking backwards can be really weird at first. So, but if you are a master at walking backwards, what I want you to do is I want you to take a couple steps back and a couple steps forward and just move those weights in a, what feels natural to you. Make sure there's nothing on the floor that you can trip over. Make sure you have a clear path. Like I said, if you need to, just take a couple steps forward and a couple steps backwards. All right, we have just, I want to try three more times down and back. So back and forwards, back and forwards, back and forwards. All right, now I want you to take it to a side step. You're side stepping a few, go as far as you can, and then you're coming back the other way. For side stepping, and I guess for backwards walking too, the longer you go, the harder it's gonna be. So like the longer your path is, the harder it's gonna be. So keep that in mind that if you have a long hallway or something where you wanna push yourself to try this, One more time, down and back. We should try to move sideways and backwards any opportunity that we get. All right, now, what I want you to do is you're just gonna take those weights just right down by your sides, and all you're going to do, step forward, step back, step side, step side. Forward, back. Side, side. We're gonna actually cool it down with some balance, but we'll first just start with a little bit of sequencing, make you think, especially under fatigue. Okay, we're doing three more. So you're stepping forward, back, side, side. I feel like this should be a dance of some sort. <laughs> side, side, two more, forward, back, side, side, forward, back, side, side. All right. Now, what I want you to do is actually drop one of the weights so you only have one in your hand. I want you to put one foot in front of the other. Now, if you are not confident in your balance, I highly recommend doing this in the corner of a wall so you have support on both sides. But 
One foot in front of the other. Now, if you need to, you can move that front foot out so you're a little bit wider. Get into a position where you can stand here comfortably. And now you're gonna out to the side, out to the side. So shimmy, 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 shimmy. Out to the side, out to the side. I'm just kind of going at a diagonal. You don't have to necessarily go way up unless you want that extra challenge of being able to kind of push it all the way overhead. But for now, we're just kind of rotating a little bit. You're not really twisting, especially if you have back pain. Probably doesn't feel wonderful. So notice my shoulders are staying right where they are. They're staying pointed forwards. And I'm just kind of reaching out side to side. Start to feel those arms a little bit. We're about to get some sweat going here. Five, four, three, two, and now you're gonna switch. So switch sides, other side in front. And if you notice one side is harder than the other, so the leg in the back is the one that's doing most of the work, then that might be one that we need to start to focus on a little bit. Now you're taking that, instead of going up, we're going down now. Down, down. Sometimes down's a little more challenging. And the second side is always a little bit more challenging just because you've already kind of fatigued it the first time. And we're just gonna go 10, nine, Keep those core muscles tight. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. All right, now if you are a master and can stand on one leg, I want to see you do it. But if you're not, that is totally okay. You're gonna use that back leg as a kickstand. So I'll show you from this side. You're gonna just lightly tap that foot. Now if you need to, you can put more weight on it but I do want you to try to challenge yourself this way. Now this is obviously much more challenging, so please, please be safe and make sure you have something to hold on to if you need it. We are on one foot and we are on that kickstand. Now, what you're going to do is you're gonna take that weight and you're gonna pass it like a triangle. So you're lifting it up and then coming down, lifting up and coming down. Awesome job. Your ankle should be working hard and you should start to feel that hip fatigue a little bit, the one that's fully on the ground. Five, four, three, two, and now you're gonna switch. Okay, other side, point those toes to the ground for that kickstand. And now what you're gonna do is you're just gonna take that lower. So now we're just taking it a little bit lower. This will make it a tad easier because that leg might be just a little bit more fatigued this time. You're lifting it up and then down, up and then down. This challenges your side to side a little bit. So especially if you have some meniscus involvement, some knee arthritis, even hip arthritis, we are building stability. And if you're with us with low back pain, degenerative disc disease, spinal stenosis, Balance is incredibly important, and I'll be posting a video on Monday on my YouTube channel of other balance exercises you can do. Five, four, three, two, and one. Okay, I want you to take that one weight, and you're gonna start kind of at a diagonal. Now, what you're gonna do is you're gonna pull that up just like a lawnmower. You're gonna pull it up and lift that leg. So I like to call this one the lawnmower. Again, lifting up as high as you can comfortably. This will challenge your balance. The lawnmower, so make sure that arm, you're pulling back. So you're leading with your elbow and pulling back. I don't want you to pull up necessarily. So you're pulling back and bringing that leg up. Five, four, three, you and last one so you just have to feel in those shoulders too that even if you have lower body arthritis your upper body is extremely important all right other side so you're going to pull back just start doing a few pull backs to get the hang of it and now when you feel ready i want you to lift that right leg or that opposite leg here we go lift that opposite leg ten nine eight seven six five four three two and 
one. All right, now we only have one wave. So what I want you to do, you're just gonna march and you're gonna pass it. And then you're gonna go to the side and pass it. I just want you to think about passing it as you're moving, because this actually can help your balance, even though it might not feel like you're gonna fall, hopefully. Go ahead. You're thinking about something as you're moving. Dual tasking, it's called, doing two things at once. Really good for your brain. So we're gonna cool it down. I want you to try to take some deep breaths. And we're adding yet another thing you need to do. So you're trying to breathe. You're trying to pass that water bottle, that weight, and you're trying to step sideways. Three, two, and one. I want you to drop both weights, so drop that weight. Make sure it's obviously out of the way. All right, now what you're gonna do is you're just gonna step and bring that arm. So we're just gonna kind of stay on one side, but I do want you to try to coordinate your breath. So breathe in and out. This is a uh, slow movement. Breathe in, in through your nose, out through your mouth. Nice, slow and steady, and let's switch to the other side. So now you're stepping the opposite way. You're just reaching, just kind of letting your arm kind of float out there. Taking those deep breaths, trying to get your heart rate down. And now what I want you to do is I want you to take one step back and I want you to see if you can kind of push those hips forward. Kind of feel that stretch in that hip if you need to take that hip back a little bit further. And you can even kind of lean forward. You can use a chair or a counter or something so you can kind of lean into it. You may feel like stretching your calf. I want you to try to push that foot down to the floor. Keep it on the floor if you can. And then just try a couple more. Just kind of leaning forward and coming back. If this doesn't feel great to your knee, just bring that foot closer. Or what you can do is keep both knees straight and just kind of hold it here. And now switch to the other side. Again, this one's a little bit easier if you have something to hang on to in front of you. Keep that back leg on the ground, that foot on the ground, and I just want you to kind of lean forward. If you need to, just keep both knees as straight as you can and just kind of hold it here. But I do want you to try to move forward. Okay, now what you're gonna do is you're gonna make some small hip circles. Now this is going to be challenging to your balance. So I highly recommend having something, sometimes I even like to use a wall like this, and then turn your hip small circle so it should not cause pain. So I don't want you trying to swing all the way out, just small circles, and now reverse the direction. And now you're gonna switch, same thing. If you do want a balance challenge, then you can try doing this without. Reverse the direction. And now we're gonna go back on that other side and I just want you to do small swings forward and back. These are two really good movements I like to use, especially if you have hip tightness, hip stiffness, sometimes even hip pain. Just doing these small kind of rhythmic movements can help to contract and relax those muscles. Okay, if you like this video, I have 10 videos just like this that take you through where to start and where to end, and you even are gonna end up doing strength training and all sorts of things in my signature online course, The Arthritis Adventure Blueprint, and I'll put a link below. So if you felt really good moving in these different directions and following along, not really having to think about it, then I have 10 full length follow along videos inside of that program, plus lots of other information on how you can actually make arthritis pain relief last. So if you like this video, if you feel good after doing it, I want you to put down in the comments below, let us know that you finished it, that you did this.